So I wanted to figure out how to make arrays that contained a spiral pattern. And over here, I've got a pair of examples of what I'm talking about. In the left box, you can see I'm counting from 1 to 16 in a spiral. There's the 1, then I've got the 2 on the left, and it just counts upward to 16 uh, going clockwise in a spiral. So I did some experimenting making spirals manually uh, in J, and I came up with an algorithm to build them. On the right, you can see the next step. In order to continue the spiral clockwise, you take the array, you rotate it counterclockwise, and then you add the next row of numbers to the top. So you can see here the right column, the 16, whoops, 16, uh, 5, 6, 7. This column rotates counterclockwise and becomes uh, the, the top row. And then we add another top row on top of that, which is the numbers 17 through 20. Once I figured out how to do it by hand, the next step is to figure out how to make J do that automatically. Now, to rotate the array counterclockwise, we take the reverse of the transpose. Transposing just means swapping the rows and columns. Um, and in J, you write it as a bar and a colon. So bar colon A, there's A, there's the transpose of A, and you can see that they've swapped. 13, 14, 15, 16 was along the top, now it's the first column. And then reverse just flips this upside down. It's reversing the list of rows. And in J, you write that as um, bar and dot. So bar dot, bar colon A. And you can see we've started with A and we've rotated A counterclockwise. 7, 6, 5, 16 was the row going up on the right, and now it's the top row. Now remember, J executes from the right to the left. So you want the bar dot on the left when you write it. These are both self-inverse functions, reversing and transposing. So if you put them out of order, it'll rotate the other way, clockwise. So if you say uh, bar colon bar, bar dot A, you get the other, it's rotated the other way. So just don't do that for, for this particular project. Just do the reverse of the transpose. To get the next part of the spiral, we just take the numbers and append them to the top. In J, you write that with the comma. So 17, 18, 19, 20, comma, bar dot bar colon A. But of course, the question is, where do these numbers come from? Well, we're counting. So we're going to use the I dot verb, but what number do we start with and how far do we count? Okay, I started with 17 because 16 was the highest number I already had, and then I just added one to get 17. And I counted out four numbers because there are four columns in the array. But that means before I rotated, there were four rows in the array. So to figure out how many numbers we need, we take the length of our input. That's the pound sign in J. So if I say pound A, that's the number of rows in A. And then we can compose that uh, with I dot. So say I dot A. And that gives us a count. And of course now we want to add 17. 17 plus I dot A. And that gives us the row. Of course, what we really want is 1 plus the highest number that's already there. So to find that, we're going to take the array and ravel it, which means flatten it down to one long string. And we write that using comma A. You're just going down the list reading the rows um, to get this, uh, to get the ravel. And now we want to take the max scan of this thing. Um, so max is a dyadic verb, which means it takes a argument on the left and an argument on the right and it returns whichever argument is bigger. So you write max as a greater dot. So if we say 4 greater dot 2, that's 4 max 2, it's going to give us 4. And if we say 3 max 10, that's going to give us 10. So now if you put that verb between each pair of numbers in our Ravel here, we're going to end up with the highest number in the whole array. And we write that as uh, 
max scan or insert max um, greater dot slash here. So we take the max scan of the ravel of A and that should give us 16. So now we're ready to put all this together. We want the max scan of the ravel plus one plus our count. Now these little at signs let us compose two verbs together so they become a single verb. So we have a verb here plus a noun plus another verb. And when we put parentheses around the whole thing, we have what's called a train. Um, and I won't explain how trains work in detail here. Um, there are plenty of great docs on uh, um, jsoftware.com. But I hope this example will kind of make sense anyway, because it's pretty simple. We're taking the max scan of the Ravel plus one plus the count up to the length of the array. And if we apply this whole train to our array A, we're going to get exactly the numbers we need to make the next part of the spiral. Hopefully that made sense. And if not, just go read the docs. Trains are unique to J, or they were introduced to the world in J, and take a little bit of getting used to, but I think that you can see that they're pretty handy and expressive when it comes to composing functions. To finish this off, we're just going to add a couple more verbs to the train. We're going to take the rotation, the, uh, and again, we're going to use the at sign to meld those two verbs into a single verb. And we're doing this only to comply with the rules of, of the train here. And then we want to append that to the thing we have just made. But as you can see, it put the numbers on the bottom instead of the top. Um, and to fix that, we just need to put a tilde over here. So there we go, the complete spiral we were trying to build. Now, uh, if we want to keep extending the spiral, we just invoke our train multiple times. We don't need to copy and paste the whole thing over and over again, though. We can just use the power conjunction. And that is spelled caret, colon, and then a number. So caret, colon, one is one time, which is what we just had. Zero would be A itself. Two times gives us the next leg. So there it is. Here's the 17, 18, 19, 20 that we added. And then now here's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And here's three times, and so on. It keeps rotating and adding parts to it. Every time you do four, you're going to wind up in the same orientation because we're rotating 360 degrees. We cheated a bit, though, because we're starting with this array A that I made by hand. And what we really want is to start with a single cell. We need a two-dimensional array as input because that's what our train here expects. But we want it to just be a one-by-one -one array, and it should contain the number one. And that's only because I want the spiral to start at 1. If you want to start at 15, you can put 15 in there. So anyway, you can write that as 1, 1, reshape 1. So there you go. But if you do it that way, you need the right identity in here. Or you need to put parentheses around it in order to separate this from the number 4 here. Or there's even a simpler way to write it, and that is just use the item ravel of a scalar. gives you a, a two-dimensional array containing that scalar as, as a 1 by 1 array. Now, the number I'm most interested in changing here is this 4, which represents the number of times we've iterated the spiral. The problem is uh, I need to pass the number to this uh, power conjunction rather than to a verb. And there may be a way to do that tacitly in J, but I don't know how. But that's okay. I'll just turn this into an explicit definition, and then you get a name called Y for free. So I can just put Y here. Um, and to make it an explicit definition, we just put the word verb in front of it. And let's call this whole thing spiral. So spiral equals verb. Oops, equals verb. So if we say spiral now, there you go. Uh, the verb is just like a constant that's equal to three. See, it's a string. That's, that's the only difference. Before, you were actually putting um, functions together and composing a new function. And now it has to parse this string. Um, but it's really not a big deal. And now we can save spiral 4, and we should get the same thing back. I can use control D to get the last word here. And if I say something like spiral 32, we'll get a real big one. Uh, too big to see on the screen. But, but these bigger arrays are actually what I was shooting for. There was a guy back in the 1940s named Stanislav Ulam. He was a mathematician, and he started doodling this one day. And then he started circling the prime numbers. And he noticed that they make an interesting pattern. 
Now, if you want to know if something is prime in J, uh, 120, for example, you pass it to Q colon, and that gives you the prime factorization of the number. And I believe if you pass in like a, an array of numbers, you get uh, rows. Because what I want to do is now take the number items. So 120 has five factors, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 5, and 10 has two factors, 2 and 5. And so that's why we see 5 and 2 uh, right there. And what I want to do now is say is equal to 1. And I can just count up to 100 here. And this should give me a long bitmap that points out where the primes are. Oops. And it doesn't like that because I started with 0. Um, and when you try and factor 0, you can't do that. So you get a domain error. So you just add 1 to it. That gives our bitmap. That's a little hard to see. Um, so there's this verb or indices, I think it's called. Anyway, it's just capital I dot. And that, but well, we've added 1 to it. So we need to add 1 to this as well. And there you have the prime numbers. Um, up to 100. But what, what's really important here is this little verb right here, which could be called is prime. So is prime 10? No. Is prime 5? Yes. Is prime 17? Yes. So now, what if we say is prime spiral 32? Now we get a nice little thing. Now we can make this a little bit easier to see if we multiply it by infinity. So say infinity times is prime spiral 32. A little bit easier to see, um, but I'm actually going to say load umat, and now we can say umat is prime spiral 32. This is a visualization of that matrix, and you can see that there are these really distinct diagonals. Ooh, I thought that was a pretty interesting pattern. Um, and with J now, we can uh, actually make a pretty big spiral, and if we grow it up a little bit. You can, you can see that that pattern really stands out. I'm not really looking to go into the math of this. There are plenty of cool videos already online about Oolong's spiral. Um, I wanted to do one more thing though here. Instead of saying is prime, where we're saying one equals this, here's something you can do really easily in J. Just take this, view mat, spiral 32. So rather than saying, is it prime? Let's just make a matrix that shows the number of factors. And then, so when you get more than two values, uh, J will fill in colors for you. So it makes a really cool little thing here. Um, oops, let me, let me slide that out so you can actually see it. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was neat. Um, and you can kind of see a little more pattern here. If you say like uh, 512, you'll get a bigger one. And I thought that was kind of a cool picture because you can really kind of see it. And then I thought one more interesting thing was to find, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to explain what this is, but I'm going to say take the square root of it. And if the square root is equal to the square root composed with the floor function, then that means it's a perfect square. So where are the square numbers in this spiral? They make a line right around this diagonal. It's actually not a perfect diagonal. It's just a little bit. You can barely see it, but it's just a little bit up and a little bit down from the one there. But if we if we show it on 32 here and just get rid of the view map, you can see that you know it's it's a spiral up to that corner and a spiral um, not a spiral a diagonal. Um, and because of the way J works here, uh, this is also a fork. This is uh, a verb, a verb, and a verb. Uh, you know, this is a compound verb. But if we put the number three here, then we'll see all the cube roots. And I thought that was interesting. Um, of course, you can't see that when you see a bitmap like that. So let's put vmap back in here. I thought that was kind of an interesting picture there. Like just the way these things are scattered around. I don't know that it has any particular meaning, but I found it kind of interesting to look at it. You, you can kind of see the spiral there, and there are kind of like arms and stuff. Anyway, so I hope that was an interesting example of how to, to build something up in J at all. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, leave me a comment, subscribe, let me know what you're interested in. Thanks.